So this video series, we've led up to the decentralized cloud. This is storage and computation combined, and we can now host websites and web apps and decentralize the web stack. But let's think about internet infrastructure for a second. We have these large centralized companies like AT&T and Verizon, who we, hold, we um, rely on to set up and maintain these telecommunications infrastructure, like cell towers and internet service providers running cables under the street. So there are now Web3 protocols that are trying to decentralize these telecommunications networks. So let's start with Helium, potentially the most well-known decentralized telecommunications network. Helium has already shown success in bootstrapping a telecommunications network. Let me just backstep and say that it's been very hard for innovative disruption in the telecommunications industry because telecommunications networks are expensive to set up. You have to purchase the right from the government to broadcast over a certain frequency range and then you have to develop proprietary hardware and software in order to transmit signals across this frequency range. So this is a very large capital expense in order to set up the infrastructure necessary for a telecommunications network. But um, Helium has shown how you can, we can bootstrap the supply side, we can bootstrap the, the um, nodes and the transmitters with cryptocurrency incentives. So Helium started this with a, a, a LoRaWAN IoT network. This is a um, devices or transmitters that allow uh, small IoT devices to connect to and connect into the internet. And um, it, if you set up a LoRaWAN transmitter, then you received cryptocurrency as an incentive. And so many people started doing this around the world. And then all of a sudden you have an entire IoT network built out for the consumers, the, the people with IoT devices to come in and use. So this is a really incredible breakthrough in Web3. You can bootstrap a physical network in the real world with crypto incentives. Helium is expanding beyond just this IoT network into 5G. So now you can be a 5G hotspot supplier, like every home or every person can be walking around with 5G hotspots for everyone else's phones to connect to. And it's really going to increase and improve the uh, connectivity of our society. And they're also looking into uh, Wi-Fi and VPN and a couple other networks, but they're trying to be what they call the Airbnb of a telecommunications network. And there are several other specific Web3 protocols that are trying to bootstrap other physical networks. We've got Foam Protocol, which is trying to do something like decentralized GPS. We've got Hive Mac Mapper, which allows people to put a dash cam up in their car and get Google Street View-like data. So Google Street View is a little outdated, but um, you know it could be like take several years for them to update a specific street. But if we distribute this, all of this data collection out to a network of millions of people, then uh, we can improve that service. Demo network is about connecting a device to your car and that device transmits mobility data. So potentially AI researchers at Tesla can start to utilize higher quality, larger data sets to train their models on. Weather XM is a local weather station. So I could put a weather station up in my backyard and it just gives an extra data point rather than a um, like a bulkier centralized uh, weather network. You can make it more granular and you can improve predictive models for weather and, and it's just gonna improve the data overall. Uh, and, and that use, there's some use cases in agriculture, I believe for that. And then there's something called Planet Watch, which is you put in air quality sensors everywhere. It's a decentralized network of air quality sensors that are testing for air pollution. And you just have more granular, better data sets for data scientists, machine learning people, other analysts to come in and utilize them for these specific use cases. So this is the conclusion of this video series. We talked about the decentralized storage, decentralized computation, the decentralized cloud, 
and now the decentralized internet infrastructure. And all of this is being bootstrapped with crypto networks. These are specific use cases for how you could use a layer one to improve technology and improve society. I think a lot of people get confused with general layer one blockchains like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Polkadot. They get confused about the use cases because you kind of have to be more into the computer science realm to understand why those state transitions might be important. But these layer ones that are focused on proof of physical work, like I'm proving that I'm still storing your file or I'm proving I'm giving you these computations or um, I, I'm proving that I'm supplying bandwidth to this IoT network. I think people are able to wrap their head around these use cases more easily. So I hope you guys enjoyed this series and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.